Hello, Michel Juvet. Hello. Panic spread on the markets with news of China's economic downturn. Does this mean it's the beginning of several weeks of really bad markets? Well, you used the word panic, and that's exactly what we had. One way to judge the panic is the volatility index. And the volatility index reached a level we reached in 2008 during the financial crisis. Yes, so that means we had a really big panic in the market. But when you look at the facts, what's happening? We have an economic slowdown in China, we knew it. We have an emerging market slowing down, we knew it. But we don't have a US recession, we don't have a European recession, and we do not have a panic in the banking system in Europe or in the US. So it's not at the moment the beginning of a, a world financial crisis, but we have an economic problem in China. Do you feel that investors realize that the measures taken by the Chinese are just not adapted to the situation? Well, one thing to remember is the power in China has decided for the last year to change uh, and fight corruption. So it has dis disrupted the channel of decisions. That's why it takes longer to implement decisions in China than before. And then the second thing which frightened a bit the investors is the Chinese authorities have decided to support the financial markets and not to implement economic reforms. And just supporting the market doesn't mean anything substantial for investors. So yes, investors were frightened by that. The Chinese economy is in transition. And what is at stake is really a better allocation of the economic growth. Yeah, definitely. And the Chinese economy is no more an emerging economy. It, it's going towards a developed economy. And, and it's normal to see the economic growth going down from 7 to 4 percent. Uh, a developed economy has that kind of uh, economic growth. But the challenge for the Chinese authorities is to move the growth from the export-oriented sector to the domestic sector. That's why they should take the opportunity of this crisis to plan new budget policies to stimulate the consumers and to make them spending more money and saving less money. So on the one hand, you have China's economic growth, which is not doing very well. On the other hand, the United States is progressing. Does this mean that the two will balance each other out and that's good for the world's economy? I think, first of all, what is important is what you said. The U.S. economy is in good shape. And as we know that the center of gravity of economic growth is moving away from the emerging countries to America, knowing that America is doing well is a perfect world. So yes, the economic growth in the U.S., plus the economic growth in Europe will compensate, but not compensate the totality of the slowdown of the Chinese economy. That's for sure, yes. Okay, we've seen panic on the markets because of the Chinese situation, but we're also seeing a huge drop in the price of commodities with important consequences for exporting countries in Africa and in the Middle East. Yeah, you're right. And uh, uh, countries like Nigeria, Russia, Middle East countries, Latin American countries, they're suffering from the drop in commodity prices. And there are a lot of companies or corporations in these countries which have borrowed a lot of money uh, and which are suffering to due to the drop of revenues today. So there is some debt risk in these countries and you, you have to be very prudent with vis-a-vis -vis these debtors today. So investors are at a bit of a loss. They don't know what strategy to adopt or which assets to look at. Yes, to start with the first of the asset class, which is currencies, I think it's an opportunity to the today to buy the U.S. currency. The dollar has been, weakened, uh, has been weak during these uh, last few weeks. Um, but if we take two scenarios, the first one is a bad scenario, we go towards a major financial crisis, then the U.S. currency will come back as a refuge currency again. Uh, if you take the second scenario, which is the most probable scenario, a normalization, and then the central bank will start to rise interest rates again, that will support the U.S. currency. That's why you have to, uh, to buy some, some dollars. Um, the second asset class, which is bonds, um, with the drop in yields we had during the last few days, uh, makes this asset no more interesting. And you have to be very careful with the debtor in this asset class, because as we said before, some of these debtors will, will go bankrupt. So then remains what? Uh, the equities. And the equities are cheaper today than a few weeks ago. So it's interesting to, to go back into equities. Which countries? Probably the countries which are the most isolated from the Chinese economic slowdown, which are America, and Europe, and you have to focus in these countries probably on companies who will benefit from the consu consum consumer rebound because the drop in oil prices and the drop in commodities will increase the purchasing power of the consumer. So next year, normally, we should have a major rebound of the consumer. And that's good news. Thank you very much, Thank Michel you. Juvet.